What's going on everybody? I'm very excited because in today's video, I'm gonna be announcing a new reoccurring series. Now, the premise is pretty simple. Now, typically I make videos about what just came out, what's brand new, what's on sale. And of course, I'm gonna keep doing that because I love this stuff. I love talking about the new features and what's going on in the industry. But sometimes I wanna talk about what I actually use, what makes me money, what's road tested I've been using for years. So that's why I'm announcing Dave's Toolbox, a new reoccurring series where I talk about all of the stuff that I use every single day. And the first episode is right now. You're watching it. We're gonna talk about CleanShot X. CleanShot is a tool that lets you do so many different things. Now I use it for three primary purposes and I'm gonna give you some very concrete demonstrations inside of this video. I use it for screen recordings as a sort of loom replacement to communicate with clients and VAs. I also use it to record my screen when I make YouTube videos and it's got some really powerful features that are perfect for that. The other side of CleanShot is screenshots and it makes amazing screenshots. I do everything from communicate complex user interfaces all the way to create full-blown YouTube thumbnails all inside of CleanShot. And finally, it's a great tool for doing OCR. When you have some text on an image and you just can't select it with your mouse, you can actually use CleanShot to copy it to your clipboard so you can put that text anywhere without having to type it all out. All right, let me show you how each one of these things work. Let's get into the screen recording. All right, so here's the CleanShot website. I'm gonna drop some links down below. If you wanna check it out, I'd appreciate it if you use my links. There's actually multiple ways to acquire CleanShot depending on your use case. So go ahead and pick through and find which one works best for you. I happen to be using it as part of a subscription service called SetApp. I've been a SetApp subscriber forever, but it's available through other marketplaces as well. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually head over to Conversion Bridge. Now, this is a website for a tool that I just made a video about. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how I make a YouTube thumbnail for a tool like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these other tabs and then I'm gonna open up CleanShot. Now, you could use a key command for this, but because we're using this for the first time, I'm gonna click up here on the CleanShot icon and then I'm gonna go down to Capture Window. Now, this is gonna bring up a still camera icon. I can put this on any window and it's gonna take a perfect screenshot of just that window. You know how windows on macOS have rounded corners? It's very difficult to get nice looking screenshots of those rounded corners, but CleanShot does it perfectly. I'll show you. Hit one button, there, I've got my screenshot. Not very complex. Of course, there's other ways to capture the screen as well. We'll get into that later on. Now you might've noticed, I've got a little dialog box open here asking me to name the file. And I'm just gonna name this demo conversion. All right, I'll hit okay. And now my screenshot goes into the lower left-hand corner. I could continue working as long as I want and this screenshot won't go anywhere. In fact, I could even pin it to my desktop, but I'm not gonna do that right now. We'll see that later on. What I wanna show you right now is that process of making a YouTube thumbnail. So I'll click on the pencil icon down here and you can see my beautiful screenshot has appeared. Now you might've noticed the checkerboard background right here that typically signifies a transparency in an image and that's exactly what's going on here as well. My screenshot has a drop shadow applied to it automatically. And I can see this a little bit more clearly if I throw a background on. So I'm gonna click right up here in the icons and I can choose one of the built-in gradients. These all look really nice. You can see the nice drop shadow as I toggle through them. I could also grab my wallpaper or even a solid color, which is what I'm gonna use for this example. There's a color picker over here so you can choose the exact color that you want, but these presets look pretty nice. I can play with the amount of padding that is in the screenshot and I can even change the aspect ratio. Because I'm gonna be making a YouTube thumbnail, I'll change it to be 16 by nine. Now, I actually want this screenshot not to be right in the center, but more off to the side. So I've got an alignment tool over here and I'm just gonna pop it over to the side. Now, the reason for that is I actually want to write some text in next to the screenshot. And I'm actually gonna add in a little bit of inset here because I'm too close to the border for my comfort. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. I've got a large area here to write some text. We've got a whole slew of formatting tools up here. Some are very unique to CleanShot, which I will demonstrate shortly, but let's start off with some text. I'm gonna make this really big. I've got it set to be 216 points, and I'm gonna add in some text here. Now, for this one, I don't wanna actually use red text. I'm gonna change this to be black. So here's what I want on my screenshot. The word analytics is too long, so I'm gonna change just the text of that word. I'll make this probably, I don't know, about 96 pixels. Oh, that's too small. 
144, that looks pretty good. I can move these words around just how I like them. And I'm gonna change the color of analytics. So I'll select that, I'll go up to the color picker here, and we'll make that pink. All right, that's really popping, I like that. But every thumbnail needs an arrow, and luckily, CleanShot has an arrow tool. So I'm gonna select it right up here, and let's go ahead and add in an arrow. I wanna point over to this buy button and let's make this arrow a little bit thicker. So I'll choose the arrow and let's set this to be the thickest option. Now I can add a little curvature to my arrow, point it right at that buy button, maybe make it a little bit longer. All right, I zoomed out to kind of see what it looks like. I think that's a pretty nice looking YouTube thumbnail for about 30 seconds of work. Now I'm done with this image, but I'm gonna show you one more example of how I use CleanShot for screenshots. So let me hit done right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this one because I don't wanna lose my work. I'll click on save right here. And now it's saved to a folder on my hard drive. All right, next up, I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how I might use CleanShot to communicate with clients. So let's say a client wanted to know where to find submissions on the forms of their website. Well, what I would do is pull open the right spot on their website and then I would grab CleanShot. Now I showed you how to take a full screen capture, but there's another way to capture the screen here. I could simply go up to the icon and then choose capture area. On my computer, I have that set to be shift command four. You can set those to be whatever you like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just grab maybe this upper quadrant of the screen. I don't want quite the whole thing. And then I'm gonna open this up right inside of the editor. Now, one of my favorite tools inside of CleanShot is the counter, which is this circle right here with the number one on it. Now, when you have this selected, anywhere you click, it's gonna start counting for you. So in this case, I wanna communicate that you first should click over here where it says Fluent Forms, and then you should click where it says Entries, and then you can see your entries right here, or whatever the case is. Now, these look a little big for my taste, so I'm gonna go back to that same sizing option that we used for the arrow just a little bit ago, and I can size this down quite a bit. I could also change the color, and there we go. That's looking pretty good. If you wanted to change this to be, say, A, B, and C, you could do that as well. If you misplace one of the counter icons, no problem. Just grab it and choose where you want it to go. Of course, you can mix and match the tools however you like. The highlighter is one of the tools that I use all of the time. So I could highlight a certain part of the interface to really call attention to something. I like it because I don't have to be super artistic and perfect I can just simply kind of scribble where I want. And I know I'm not gonna obscure the user interface because it's a highlighter. It's not gonna go right over anything. It's got some opacity to it. All right, when I'm all done with this, I'm probably gonna to wanna to send it to the client. So I'll simply click right over here on the little cloud icon, and that's gonna send the screenshot up to CleanShot Cloud. And when this is all ready to go, I can give the file a name here, like user interface, tag it if I want, set a password, and set it to self-destruct, which means that it's gonna be deleted after a certain amount of time. For now, I'll set this to be one day. I'll hit upload, and just like that, it's being sent to the cloud, and on my clipboard is the link that I can share right inside of an email or a Slack channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, you can see that I've got it branded to my actual domain name here. It's share.clientamp.com. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But here is the image. It loads very quickly and it looks really nice on the screen as well. I have the option to download it if I want. And yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. A very nice way to share screenshots with your clients, no fuss. Now, remember, this was uploaded to a service called CleanShot Cloud. You get a CleanShot Cloud with every way that you can purchase CleanShot. Just the amount of storage you get is going to vary depending on how you get it. This is my CleanShot Cloud. You can see that I just uploaded this image right here. And if I wanted to, say, delete it or get that share link again, I could simply click right here. My CleanShot Cloud account only has 10 gigabytes of storage, which doesn't sound like that much, but honestly, I never ever think about the storage space in CleanShot. I use the tool all the time, every day, and I'm still only using three gigabytes out of the 10 because I set a lot of things to just self-destruct because they're not really messages that I wanna keep around forever. They're just simple little screen recordings. They do have larger plans if you want, but I find 10 gigs is plenty for myself. If you fill up your account, you can of course just delete everything inside of your CleanShot. Now that will break any existing links that you have out on the internet, but you could simply export all of your data and then go and delete all of your files and continue using your account. In the advanced section is where you set up your custom domain name. So like I showed you a minute ago, mine is share.clientamp.com, but it's very easy to change that at any point. 
You can also brand your portal with either your user avatar, which is what I'm using, or you can change it to be your company logo. And if you're concerned about that download button, you don't want it available for download, you can go ahead and just toggle that off and then people will no longer be able to download your screenshots or screen recordings. So that is how I use CleanShot for taking screenshots. Next, let's get into using CleanShot for screen recordings. This is actually how I record my screen for YouTube videos and I also use it as a sort of loom replacement. Let me show you how it works. From the menu bar, I'm gonna choose record screen. Now the on-screen controls are gonna appear and I can grab these little handlebars to choose which part of the screen I'm actually recording. Now currently I have this set to be a 16 by nine aspect ratio lock. So wherever I resize the window, it's always gonna be a perfect 16 by nine lock. But if you wanna turn that off, you can certainly do that and you can have it free form, move the handles any direction that you want. I can position this anywhere on the screen that I want, but if I wanna be very precise and just grab a specific window, I'll press the space bar. And just like we saw in the screen capture before, I now have a camera icon up here. This time it's a video camera. So I'm gonna click right here on the Safari window and now I've got the entire Safari window selected. Now I like to record my screen at 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that resolution in. And you can see that it automatically snapped exactly to those proportions. The screen capture features of CleanShot are extensive. It could be an entire hour long video just to go over them. So I'm gonna hit the highlights. The main buttons that you see are to control things like your microphone. You can choose whatever mic you'd like to use. On my laptop, a lot of times I'll use my iPhone as my microphone. So I'll just hold it in one hand, use the mouse in another, and I've got a pretty decent high quality microphone. It works great with continuity camera. So your iPhone will show up right there inside of the devices. You can also use your iPhone as a continuity camera for video, which is this icon right over here. And I'm gonna turn that on in a minute, but I actually skipped one icon. And this is an important one, something that I think a lot of people will appreciate. It's for system sound. So if you're trying to play back a presentation that has audio in it, you won't lose that if you're using CleanShot to capture it. Any video that's playing on screen, all of the audio will be recorded internally, so it's not like coming through a microphone or anything. It's gonna sound really good, like it's part of the actual video. So I can imagine this would be great if you're doing something like a YouTube reaction video or you're watching YouTube and you wanna grab that audio of the video you're watching on YouTube. The last two options are related to some on-screen indications of what you're doing. So the first one is your mouse clicks. I have this turned on right now. We'll see what that looks like in a second. And the next one is for key commands. So if you're using a lot of key commands, let's say you're doing like a tutorial for Logic Pro or Photoshop and you wanna show all of the key commands you're using, they can automatically show up on the screen for you. I'll demonstrate that in a minute here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is turn on that continuity camera. But to do that, I'm actually gonna turn off, I've got a light on behind me. So let's get it a little bit more moody in here. All right, I've got the light off. I'm gonna go ahead and connect up my iPhone camera here. We'll set it up. I've got one of those little Belkin mounts. There we go. That's what it looks like. Now, here is that light right there that would have been shining right in your face if I left that on. That's why I made it darker in here. But you can see I've got my camera. I can move it around the screen just like a loom video here. If I wanted to go full screen to explain something more intimately, go ahead and pop that on. This is actually the camera I use most frequently when I'm doing something like a Zoom call or just a quick meeting with a client because it's not as like cumbersome to set up as a big, nice, fancy YouTube camera. Now I'm currently using this vertical look for the video, but if I wanted to use a different shape, it's very easy to do so. Just click over on the camera icon and you can choose between maybe a more traditional circle look or you could do a square or whatever you like. All right, let's go ahead and make a screen recording here. I'm just gonna hit the record video option and now we are recording. And what I really like, first of all, is the fact that I can see exactly what is being recorded here. Now I can see my screen is not quite touching the edge here. I moved it around a little bit. I was shifting things around so I can make that adjustment to know exactly what is in the frame and what's not. These controls right here, I can move around the screen. They don't actually show up in the recording, but what I can actually do is press the pause button while I'm recording and now my recording is paused. If I need to get up for a second, I could do that, come back and hit record again, or it's actually the play button. The recording picks up exactly where it left off. So a really seamless way to start and stop your recordings. I don't know of another tool that does that, but I love that feature about CleanShot. 
There's also this button right here, which lets you restart your recording. So often for me, the hardest part about recording is the beginning. Well, the beginning and the end, but typically the beginning is very difficult for me. So I might do the beginning a few times and I can easily press this restart button so I don't end up with a string of bad takes in the beginning. I'll just press restart. It's gonna ask me if I wanna restart. Boom, now we're recording again. You can see the counter went back down to zero and I can take another stab at nailing that perfect intro. Or if you screw up and you wanna throw your hands in the air and walk away, there's a trash icon over here. So you can just hit that and then the recording stops, it doesn't save to your hard drive. Don't worry, there is a confirmation message for that as well. So you can hit cancel and continue recording where you left off. All right, so I just wanna demonstrate those two features with the clicks. You can see anywhere I click on the screen here, it's leaving a little colored outline of where I clicked. I can change that color inside of settings to be anything that I want. And the other feature I was gonna show you was the option for the key command. So I kinda of have it right on top of my uh, profile or my uh, video camera there. So I can go ahead and move that. You can see here that what the key commands would look like. So if I wanted to press, I don't know, shift command N, I can do that and it shows up inside of the video. It's printed right onto the video. It'll be there if you open it up in a video editor. So make sure those are the key commands you actually want to record. All right, so this is the screen recording. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this right now. And it's gonna do the same thing it did for my screenshots. Ask me for a name. I'll call this demo one, two, three, hit okay. And now I've got the options to upload this to the cloud. So I'm gonna upload it to the cloud. We'll take a look at what it looks like on the cloud. And then I'm gonna turn this light back on. All right, my video has just uploaded to the cloud. I've got the link on my clipboard. I heard it make the sound. I'm gonna go ahead and press return here. Now, as soon as you upload a video, it does take a second to process, but it goes pretty quick. We could even sit here in real time and watch it if we wanted to. We're not going to, but it goes pretty quick. You can see the bar progressing, and then it'll be available to watch right inside of the player. And if you have downloads on, people will be able to download it as well. All right, there's our video. I can go ahead and play it. Looks really good. I can change the speed over here. I can pop it out into picture in picture. Yeah, it's a pretty nice, simple video player. Now my video is still living down here in the corner, even though I uploaded it to the cloud. I could still copy it to my clipboard or save it to my hard drive if I wanted to. There's a few more options worth taking a look at. I've got this little preview icon, which just pops it open to a preview window here so I could play it locally on my computer if I wanted to. And there's also the option to open it up in the editor. Let's do that. Now the editor isn't super full featured, but it does let you trim the beginning and end of the video if you want to. And you can also resize it. I use this function a lot because I'm usually recording at very high resolution and I wanna downsize it. Now you might be wondering, if I record at 1920 by 1080, why is this saying 3840 by 2160? Well, I'm on a Mac and I've got a Mac screen here. Mac screens are retina screens. If you've ever seen any Mac marketing or Apple marketing, you know that. Now, what does that mean, a retina screen? It means that each pixel is actually two pixels. So if you record at 1920 by 1080, you're recording at 3840 by 2160. Yeah, I had a look to get the numbers right, but that's 4K. So this is actually really nice if you're a YouTuber like I am because now all of your screen recordings are gonna be really high resolution. You can zoom in on different parts of the interface and everything still looks crisp. Another nice YouTube centric feature is the ability to set your frame rate for your screen recordings. I'm not sure of very many other applications that lets you do this. The built-in QuickTime player certainly doesn't. So I can click right up here on the clean shot icon, go down to settings, and then choose recording video. And here is video FPS where I can set my frame rate for my screen recording. I have it set to 60, which is the highest amount. It makes the mouse look the smoothest when I move it around the screen. I'm gonna show you a few more features inside of CleanShot that I love, and then I'll end by showing you that OCR feature that I think is super cool. All right, so next I'm gonna show you something called scrolling capture. I'm on Twitter right now. I've got a Twitter thread up, and I wanna capture not only the main tweet, but also all of these comments that go on for quite a ways. So what I can do here is grab CleanShot, go to scrolling capture, and then I'm gonna select a portion of the window. I don't have to get the whole thing here. I'll just go to right about here. All right, now when I release the mouse, I can turn on the scrolling capture. I simply scroll and you can see the screenshot being captured to my right. I can go as long as I want here. Eventually the screenshot will look like it's getting skinnier. It's still high resolution. It just has to get skinnier to all fit in the screen. All right, this is looking pretty good. I think I've reached the end of the comments. I'm gonna hit done. I'll give this a name 
And this time I'm actually gonna save it and I've opened it up inside of preview to demo it. So let me just zoom in here. You're gonna see that it's still nice and crisp. I can see the entire thread just like I'm on Twitter. So this is great if you want to grab any information, not just Twitter threads, but any information that doesn't fit inside of one screen. A really nice way to do that. Now, of course, you could also mark up one of those scrolling captures. And I wanna show you that, but oops, I accidentally closed it. Well, don't worry, you can actually open up any image inside of CleanShot. However, if an image was taken inside of CleanShot, you might find yourself clicking up here and then going to the capture history where you can actually restore a recent image. So there we go. Now it's back down in the corner and I can mark it up. However, it doesn't end there. I've got a meme right here on my desktop. I'm gonna right click on it and choose open with CleanShot. It's gonna pop it right open into the editor and I could continue to mark it up however I like. From there, I can upload it to CleanShot Cloud and share it with the world. And if you're wondering, yes, this works for videos as well. You can open them up inside of CleanShot, click the little button and then upload it to your CleanShot Cloud, even if you didn't record it inside of CleanShot Cloud. All right, next I'm gonna grab a screenshot of all of these analytics logos here. So I'm gonna use the selection tool. We'll grab this and now I've got that as a screenshot. I'm gonna pin this. We haven't looked at this part of the tool yet, but when I pin a screenshot, it lives on top of all of my other active windows. So I can still interact with my browser window here, but this stays on top. This is really nice if you need to grab some information and maybe you're taking notes and you wanna be able to look at an image or a chart grab a screenshot of it, you can just position it anywhere you want on your Mac and then continue working and it'll always live above any other applications that you're using. For this next example, I'm gonna combine the pinned screenshot with the OCR tool inside of CleanShot. Now, if you're not familiar with OCR, I think it stands for optical character recognition. It's basically like a machine learning way of grabbing the characters that are on the screen. And then we can copy it to our clipboard and put it anywhere on our computer. So to use this, you can just go up to the menu bar, grab OCR right here, capture text OCR. You'll get the same crosshairs we had before, but now you just select text with it and it's copied to your clipboard. So I can go over to my note here and paste that in and I can go do this again. I've got a key command for it. I'll press shift command zero is how I have it assigned. I'm gonna grab tiny analytics and we'll go ahead and paste this up here. Now you notice this first one actually got a little bullet point. So I'll remove that. I most likely got a little piece of the logo in my selection, but this works really, really fast. And I use it all the time, even when I'm doing like web developments and I need to grab something that isn't selectable, just plain text. Sometimes they restrict it from being selected. This is a great way to grab it. For one more example for that OCR tool, I just wanna show you that it doesn't have to be an individual word. So a lot of times on social media, you'll see people post screenshots of other people's tweets or things like that. Maybe you wanna grab the plain text. Well, pull open your OCR tool. You can select multiple lines if you want, grab them all in one go, and then sure enough, there you go, it's all inside of your clipboard. Now there is a feature to choose whether or not you wanna keep line breaks. I have that turned off right now, but it's easy enough to just format it and add those back in. So that is CleanShot X, and now you know why it has a place in my toolbox. If you're a Windows user and you know of a good alternative to CleanShot X for Windows, definitely drop me a comment down below. I wanna know about it. And if you're a Mac user, try out CleanShot. I think you're gonna love it. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in the video or anything in general, hit me up in the comments. I'll definitely be around answering everybody's questions. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.